Welcome back to the basement here. Let's finish up this Trex and get it polished. Got it set up. Um, I pulled the board in it last night. I've got a few problems going on with this one. Um, I knew it had a power problem whenever I got it. Kind of put it on a back burner, but I went ahead and uh, pulled the board because when I unplugged the ribbon cable, I noticed there's a burnt pin on the number one. Right there, you can kind of see it there all blowed out and black. Um, flip it around here. This is what I get to clean up. This will be for next video. Makes a perfect little segue. So I'll get that cleaned up. I've got a couple connectors coming. Upon further inspection, I found the actual problem. Um, these are the power regulators down here. Um, this one here is blowed out. U25. Um, it should look like this one. Get it at the right angle. Should look like this one, but it is completely blowed out. I don't know if the headlamp will work. But you can kind of see it there. I'll get a little bit better in the next video, but that's the problem with it. We're going to replace this regulator and we're going to replace this connector for this uh, game here. And this is the 83 board. This is an original Chex. This is the 83, not the Super Chex or the Super Chex Pro. They'll have different game boards than this. Um, but we'll, we'll fix this game board in the next video. On to polishing. Let's get this sucker polished. So I've got my microfiber towels here, plenty of them. I've even got a big stack here behind us. Plenty of those. I can't stress that enough. Um, polish. I like the novice setup. The number one I like to use as a prep cleaner. It's not so much as a polisher in my eyes. It's kind of like a fancy Windex. You know, you don't want to use Windex on these, but it's a it's the cleaner for this. I use this as a cleaner. Or if I'm going to, you know, before I sand it, I clean with this. Before I polish, I'm going to clean with this. Um, you know, if, I, if I've had it sitting in the corner for a little while, I'm going to clean it off with this and a microfiber towel. This is what I use to clean my domes with, nothing else. Um, so that's always on the shelf there. Number two, novice, is for the fine scratch. This is what you normally want to start out with. If you did not wet sand, start out with the number two. This is what most people will start out with. If you can't feel the scratch, if you don't have a scratch bad enough and it's just surface scratches, start with the number two, see where that gets you, and then make the judgment if you need to go to the number three. Um, since I wet sanded, I'm gonna start with the number three because I've got a few spots I know I need to work on um, that are my deepest spots. Um, you can't get everything. Um, as much as I try and as much as you can try, sometimes scratches are just too deep. But we can get 95 to 98% of scratches doing this. Um, you know, you may have the deepest ones just kind of barely show, but, but we're going to try our dangest to get them. So if you run out of number two or a finishing scratch polisher, I've also experimented with this, this kit scratch out. And it actually works pretty good. Kind of a fan of it. So if you're in a bind and you can't find novice, I recommend this. It's also uh, made for plastics, fiberglass, or plexiglass. So it's the right stuff. Some, you know, you don't want to use a lot of auto polishes that may have toxic or harsh chemicals. So I just either stick with novice or this kit here. So again, six inch hand polisher. I went with the auto spa. And I'm going to start with the foam bonnet with the number three. There's also the wool pads and the, and the fiber optic pads. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to use a wool pad or a foam pad to start out with, a wool pad again to hit it with on the number three, and then see what that looks like. And then I'll probably switch to number two with the wool pad and then see where that gets me. You know, you just just keep going with it. The more more time and more hours and pressure you put in with it, the more the more the shine's going to be. It's it's going to take a lot of time in some cases to get the shine. If you've got an old dome, if you've got a 35 year old dome, it's going to take some hours. If you've got a 2005 check that's never been in a bar or never been in a, a you know a pay setting, you could probably have this done in a couple hours with number two. 
I'm just having to work a little bit extra hard because this is the old dome and I want to save the old dome. So I'll set my rags to the side here, grab my number three polish, and it may be a little loud as I'm polishing. I'll try to talk over it and see how it sounds. Um, oh yeah, we're going to we're going to clean it with number one. I'm going to set the example. So here's I'll spray it down with number one microfiber towel. Just make sure you get all the any particles, any dirt, any anything that might get in the way of you polish. And some of this is on the inside. After I, I went ahead and hit it with 7000 again last night just to get it, you know, look that much more shinier because that's just the way I am. So, I mean, I recommend hitting it with 7000. Some people will say it's overboard, but you can see how much more clear it is versus the, um, you know, when I finished in 3000. You can start to see through it here. So then your polisher is going to be working less as hard to get that shine. Okay, so prepped, wipe down, number three, scratch remover. And I just apply it like the migration symbol. If you go to any, any little ancient place, you'll see a little migration symbol. Just put that right over it. <clears throat> and then polisher, always hold the cable off. This, you don't want the cable hitting your dome as you're going, so I'll have one hand holding. Um, and I'll start in a like a quarter section here, so go ahead and start it. Get my polish work around. And here I'll kind of go every which direction with the, the hand polisher. I may focus, you know, going up and down this way for my quarter section here. Maybe whenever I come back around, I'll come, I'll go up and down. I'll just kind of work a quarter section real good. You know, this will be just the initial polish. We're not gonna, it's not gonna be like glass just yet. You just wanna get the number three worked in real good. And you know, wherever your heavier scratches are on this dome, my heavier scratches are on this area. So this is where I'm gonna focus. Some, uh, if you need a little bit of wax, you know, you can come up here and pick some up from the top and bring it down. That's why I kind of do it in a circular motion. I can kind of grab it whenever I need it. But this first round, I just kind of want to, you know, work a quarter to work a half, you know, depending on how it's going here. Be sure to get the corners real good. You'll you'll get a little bit of sandpaper edge right there. But as long as you work this edge, you'll get all those scratches. You know, get, get the base of that part really good because you're gonna you will see it once the ice is on there. Once that white ice gets on, you'll, if you got any scratches there, you'll see them. Just keep working around. You got that quarter pretty good. We'll work to the next quarter. No grab and polish when you need it. You know, however you have to, to put pressure on it to make it comfortable for you. Some people may want shorter strokes. I do the longer strokes at first. Bad spots I'll focus on. Like I 
said some of this is on the inside. This all this black stuff is just from the scoreboard, but you'll get that. The old scoreboard has a fan on it, and it always gets collects that dust right there. I haven't cleaned the inside of it yet. That'll be the next step is cleaning the inside. And just work your number three really good. I'll just do half right here and I'll wipe it off and we'll look at it. But, you know, it'll be a few hours. I'll cut it a little short here. It'll be a little shorter video, but I'll be, I'll be doing this for a few hours here. Trying to let the buffer do the work, but yet I'm putting putting pressure on it. Always try to put a little bit of pressure on it. That way it's working. Alright, well, let's wipe that off. See what it looks like. Especially after that first run, you'll be able to see where you need to focus on your buffing you know you get some parts this you know this section's looking pretty good here but you know i know i need to buff some more here with the deeper scratches get the wax and save some of that but yeah you can kind of see where you can start to see the shine come back it won't be all the way so don't panic after even two or three times with the number three I'll, I'm, I'm gonna hit it with the number three two or three times and I'll come back give an update and then we'll switch to number two okay so I'm about to hit it again with uh, another round of number three and towards the end of using number three um, I always want to kind of wipe off my pad here between, you know, if I don't switch it out, I'll wipe it off just to get the old wax off. And then you may run into this um, like I kind of am. I like to be perfect. I may have to go back and hit this with sandpaper. There's a couple of spots that I may have to go to like uh, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, maybe do like a three rounder on it just to get it perfect because that's the way I am. But... Um, I'm going to go ahead and just try to work them with number three right now. And, and so I did on the foam pad, I just did two rounds of it. And then this is going to be the third round of the foam or of the uh, wool pad. So on this third round and hopefully the last round, if the scratches are up to par, I'm just going to focus on the main scratches. That's about where I'm at now is just these main couple here so I'll focus on that hit it with number three if I can go to number two I'll be back if not I'm gonna go ahead and just wet sand these couple little patches again just to get them back right and then polish it and get it back to at least the number two and, and come back with an update on the number two polish okay so I went ahead and wet sand at a few of these spots because I want to try to get it as close to perfect as I can. Um, but yeah, I hit it with uh, 3,000 and then hit it with the 7,000. And that was good enough to get what I was seeing, I hope. Um, I went ahead and went back over it with number three. So you can start to see it's a little shinier. And even after the number three, you're going to still see the fine scratches. Because the number three doesn't get rid of the fine scratches. That's why you get the number two. So now we're going to switch to the number two, which I'm about out of. The mailman didn't, he just brought me number three today. I didn't get the 321 kit that I was supposed to get with the number three bottle. So I'll use the last of it. And then, like I said, that kit scratch off is pretty good stuff. So I'm going to hit it with the last of my novice two. And then uh, I can switch to scratch, uh, the scratch out from kit. But with the number two, I'll kind of work a little bit smaller sections for sure, maybe not as 
bigger strokes. Focusing on my problem spots here. And this, uh, this was a fresh wool pad too, by the way. I just went to number two, so a fresh pad. Be sure to press down firm. this over with the number two. Get down to where I have to use the kit and do a little shake back in. It's just not a, a miracle pace. You do have to work at it. It's not a it's not magic things here. You gotta work for it. Okay, back to where I think I can just use the fine scratch remover. I'm out of the number two, so I'm going to just use the kit scratch off. So just kind of pour it around there real good. And, and just depending on the scratches is how many times you're going to have to do this. The more scratches, you may have to go five, six, you know, seven passes, depending on how good you want to get it. Um, some of this is on the inside. I need to just pull it off. I've got a towel. I'll sit on the ground, put the top of the dome on the towel, and then work the inside real good. That way you don't scratch the dome as you're getting the inside. But, um, but yeah, just to the point where I'm going to just keep working it with the fine scratch and get all the stuff off. Um, you can see how clear it's starting to get, but um, the problem areas still have a few scratches. So, you know, we're just going to keep working them and putting a lot of pressure on, on the problem areas. That's the only way you're going to get them. Just making sure you put good pressure on the buffer too. Just make it work for you. So yeah, I'll spend the rest of the night doing that, getting it just perfect, um, and that's basically it. You know, the more you work at it, the more shine you'll get, the less scratches you got, the better it'll look. So, you know, you can't get all of it, but I'm being sure going to try. Um, also, a few other things, the reed switches on the O sensors, I'm going to change them as well. O sensors right there, those little glass pieces, I've got a few that are broke, so... Also, in, in that probably the same video we fixed the board, we'll fix those O sensors as well. I've got them coming as well. Um, but yeah, you just keep uh, keep working it with the buffer, and uh, you'll get there. And let your eyes be the judge. You'll see the difference. It'll it'll really start shining. Um, but you know, again, if if you've got some scratches that won't go out, you may have to go back and wet sand again, just like I had to do. Um, but at least you don't have to do the whole dome. You can just focus on these little spots. And hit them with the fine stuff and, and get it to where you need it and just keep working at it that's the main tips i can give you if you got any questions hit me up in the comments and uh see what we can do thanks